Hello Lex players and welcome to my new video. If you're new here, hi, I'm Lex and today we are very deep in Lex play lore because I'm gonna show you 101 ideas for your island all presented by me. That means that approximately 99 of these ideas were my original ones and we're gonna go through my islands to check them out. If you don't already recognize it, Currently, we are on the Island of Lost Falls, the first ever island I built for YouTube and just one that is very near and dear to my heart. I think it's one of the best islands I've ever created still to this day. I don't think I will ever top this if I make another autumn island. It's just beautiful and great and we stand Lost Falls. Anyway, let's get into these ideas. I'm going to try to keep it concise because 101 is a lot to get through and I want to keep it pretty short. So let's get into it. These ideas will range from small ideas to large ideas, and I wanted to start off with some large ones. So here is a courtyard to inspire you, a mushroom forest, a sunken waterfall featuring past Lex, and also just in this area, this large land bridge that you can create intersections with, a very large foresty campsite. Might I perhaps interest you in a lake house or maybe a rock garden arranged around a centerpiece? And don't worry, I didn't forget beaches. Check out this beach picnic. And then there's this, an enclosed, very grand version of a courtyard. And I'm always down for a layered neighborhood. I think the villager homes look so cool when they're kind of, you know, above. They look like they're on a little cliff, a mountain. Level up your orchard by making it sunken and putting it at the very back of your island for an ocean view. Remember that layered neighborhood? You can also use that to make but a bum -ba bum Why was I about to do the McDonald's theme instead of the like drum roll? Anyway, make a secret, secret beach. Look at this, how cute. You can design a cabin in the woods and it doesn't even have to be creepy. And if you have bridges to spare, here's an excellent offset double bridge view. If you have a very awkwardly shaped small area, literally just squirrel a tent away there. Give it some animals maybe too, look at that little duck. Regardless of your theme, maybe do an area about a holiday. This one is my Christmas beach. Resident services is arguably one of the hardest places to decorate. Well, look at this, look at this little alcove, but it doesn't end there, no, because it's actually symmetrical. There's another one over here. Can you believe it? Use all your trees to make a little foresty trail. This one leads to the beach. Of all the ideas, I think this one is the smallest. Literally just place a holiday candle on the Turkey Day garden stand. For those awkwardly sized vertical beaches, make a little flower shop. Pop a balloon and don't open the gift. Boom, you've got some free decor. And then lastly for Lost Falls, use creeks to separate two areas. So I made this little tent for a Black uh, Friday stakeout and it's right beside Nook's Cranny so that whoever stakes out Nook's Cranny gets the first dibs. We're not slowing down though, because what about a little duck pond? A mysterious view of a dinosaur in the distance. A well-hidden shrine or graveyard that apparently Pashmina had a map to. A very relaxing little beach campsite. A miniature island. Or perhaps a clifftop home. Try a home that's hidden away at the back of your island. For me, it's Coco. For really awkward, straight areas of land, make an outdoor spa and make little cafes run by your villagers. Try a little micro farm without even using actual crops. These mums are cauliflower. Remember when camper vans took over the community? Put a little boardwalk on the beach. Hide a mysterious shrine in the forest. Give your villagers a tiny park. No one ever said no to a little fishing at the secret beach. Or a picnic with a beautiful view. Get creative and make a sunflower field with other yellow flowers like pansies and custom designs. One of my personal favorites, use cliffs to make an overlook and, you know, use log stakes to create fencing for that. And confirm that your island is run by green energy. Perhaps create a little bike trail through the woods. Make a scenic market by kind of offsetting your inclines and making one backwards so you go down and then back up to go to your two different shops. And if your paths are boring, make a little uh, waterfall hop hop spot between the cliffs. One of my favorite more recent builds is this foresty neighborhood and it features these kind of veiled waterfalls that look like they're moving as you walk. I love that effect. A grand symmetrical gazebo moment never hurt anyone. 
And although mine is enormous, you can make a layered farm as big or as small as you like. As you can see, I have a little incline going down and there's more crops. This is one of my favorite all time builds. You can make a land bridge with any manner of fencing. And let me emphasize again, there are numerous ways to use extra bridges and inclines. Here's one. I also love a good farmer's market that is locally owned and operated by gyroids. Try this sunken pathway design that was popularized by crossing.callisto on Instagram. And this will work almost anywhere if you just defy logic. Stick a bus stop there. Try a floating hybrid garden or a strawberry cafe that's definitely strawberries and not uh, roses. Perhaps a little turtle beach with some tide pools. No matter what season it is, it's always a good time for a spooky forest. And if you have a spooky forest, you might as well also have a spooky cafe with all the pumpkin spice stuff you could want. You can even make your own fishing tourney if you, like me, hate CJs. How cool is mine? Make a little frog shrine on your beach, or you know, you could also just make this a little beach mushroom forest. You could also try an enormous neighborhood that has every single villager home in this one little area, all of them together, a happy little community. In addition, I love having a little floating shopping district. Check it out. Here they are, just little decks leading the way from Nook's Cranny to Abel Sisters. And while you're at it, do a floating rock garden too. Symmetrical builds are still in, according to me. And small spaces are always a good opportunity to make a little resting space. An infinity pool is a great idea for the back of your island. And I'm also a big fan of a tiny little land bridge. And this is a tiny idea, but use your petal parasol to make it look like a big flower on the ground. And then try to make a mountain on your island somewhere. I used mine for this campsite because I think it just looks really cool like this. The campsite on a mountain, but you can put anything up here. I think this is a really cute idea. Just a little crafting area on the beach. Literally just the whole concept of using tiny libraries as mailboxes. Having a secret little writing area is cute or, you know, whatever your hobby is. I love to see little intersections. These are especially good for city islands, but I made it work for my colorful town island too. You could even try making a bridge overlook in front of resident services and perhaps do a better job of lining it up with resident services than I did. I also love splitting up areas by color. So this is a pink little spot, but then I've also got spots like this that are super orange. Speaking of colors, I really love this micro little hybrid garden and also this tiny little picnic. It's so small. This area looks even cooler with a wide angle camera, but something symmetrical like this is really cool in, you know, grand, really big areas. And I always try to create areas that use different furniture from the rest of my island. So in this case, I used the bamboo items to make a little zen walk. I'm also very proud of this sunken rock garden that I created with elevated rocks. And for a small area, I think bike rentals are absolutely adorable. And then another really cool way to use a lot of hybrid flowers on your island is to create a clockwise hybrid garden like this. So as you can see, it starts with red, there's orange to the right, then yellow and white and green in the back. Then it transitions into blue and purple, pink and black. I think it just works so well and it looks so beautiful. It's great to walk through. Beach bonfires are a classic because they're always going to look good. And I think this little package slash mail center on the beach really counts as an amenity for my villagers. I wish I did backyards more often, but for this island, I did do a market behind my house. So I thought that was really cute. Just a little, a little farmer's market almost. I also adore this little fishing area at the very back of my island. It's super hidden. Like I think it's really hard to get to this area. A lot of people who have visited my dream address probably never even saw it. I love a good little outdoor area to sit and eat. I think these are always cute and you can change their size to whatever your empty space is. Another cute idea is to mismatch your chairs whenever you're doing any sort of seating arrangement. I think it adds so much character and I don't know, it makes it look really whimsical. And this idea also works great for the beach. If you want to add a little bit of variety, I will also, by the way, list all of the dream addresses that I've been visiting in the description so you can see these builds all for yourself. And here at the end, I wanted to take a second to share some ideas from islands that I no longer have the dream address for. And here are some of those ideas. First up, a foresty beach nook. 
Second, you can create views using cliffs. I think this is so cool. Next, reading by a little campfire, a little reading nook. Then make a market for red. Create narrow valleys with your cliffscaping. Do a forest trail. Maybe make a diving spot on your peninsula. Try a wishing well on the beach, defying all logic. For tiny spaces, throw some laundry stuff in there. It always looks good. Do color themed beaches. Create a corridor to anywhere. And then you can try a big lead up to the museum. While we're here, I wanted to say thank you so much to all of my members. You all mean the world to me, and I'm so grateful for your ongoing support. If you'd like to become a member, the link is in the description. That's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found some kind of inspiration in these 101 ideas, and I'll see you in the next one. But for now, bye!